Hi, my name is Wendy. I'm here at the Smithsonian with Elizabeth, and we've been talking about how teachers have the wonderful opportunity to explore interdisciplinary work. Can you tell us a little bit about how we can do that with an artwork? Yeah, so an artwork gives us opportunities to think about an artist's voice. It gives us an opportunity to think how an artwork is a product of its time or place. And it's also an incredible teaching opportunity for students to discover the tools that they have at their disposal for making sense of both artwork in a museum but also their own world. Okay. I would argue that we start out looking slowly and closely and it's a tempting thing to see the label text right nearby. So should I go right there and read it? All the answers are there, right? It's very, very <laughs> tempting and that's that's totally fine. I would argue though that there's an opportunity lost by looking at the label text directly. So what we might do instead is look slowly and closely at the artwork thinking about what is there, what details has the artist provided for us, and then thinking about what's familiar. In the case of the artwork that's behind us, mm -hmm. what often happens is that students start to note that it has the overall shape of the United States. Um, they note that some of the words are familiar, that the way the words are in arrangement next to each other um, also seems fairly familiar. But then there's a next step where we can start to think about what's unfamiliar. And those unfamiliar components really push our thinking. In this case, a lot of times students notice that those familiar names are missing. Uh, they notice also that while the overall shape of this map is familiar, the, there's a smearing or blurring of the lines that we might um, expect to see. And then they also notice a black ocean surrounding. Yes. Sometimes people talk about art evoking feelings. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about how we explore mood? Yeah, so just like in um, an English lang language arts classroom, we do talk about mood. And in this case, a lot of times students will mention words like sadness, or violence, um, despair, things like mm. that. Um, and then I have the opportunity to say, what do you see that makes you say that? And more often than not, they cite the dripping paint and then the artist's choice of black for those oceans. Okay, you've shared a lot of things that have us looking inside mm -hmm. and uh, interpreting in our own thoughts. Yes. Uh, what do we do to get some of that external or uh, maybe contextual information to help our understanding? Sure, yeah, so there's always a place for information, especially in education. And so for instance, this work was made in 2000 by a woman named Jean Courtesy Smith, and she is um, part of the Salish Kootenai section of the Flathead Nation. So I hope your brain is already starting to make connections to history content or other things that you're familiar with. And, and just like you wanted to inspire students, fills everyone with questions. <laughs> yes, exactly. And so with those questions, now yeah. you've made a space for it. And I can say, ah, oh, here's the little bit, yes, here's the little bit. Instructional readiness. Exactly. And so just as one might um, in the classroom here also, the specific application or strategic application of information is really valuable. I think there are a lot of extensions and continuations. You've mm -hmm. really got us going in the right direction. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you.